going on everyone this is your yankee messiah here with you coming at you guys with another video and of course this is friday and i'm sure you guys have already started the weekend with this being christmas weekend i mean this is going to be um a three-day weekend so to say four days um if you're uh out of work today and i'm going to try to do this video quickly and Possibly as I can because we have some crazy storms out here today in the Northeast. Um, my power's been flickering on and off and um, seems that things have calmed down for the moment. But anyways, I want to get into uh, the topic of discussion here in Yankee baseball. And as we know throughout the week, we've seen the whole Aaron Judge being uh, official going to the Yankees for nine years. Uh, we saw the press conference yesterday with Carlos Rondon and one of the things that really jumped out of that press conference on Wednesday uh, is Hal Steinbrenner and Hal Steinbrenner from the looks of it is ready to throw down with the New York Mets and I talked about this when the whole judge thing happened on Wednesday that what we're seeing right now could be the start of a baseball war in New York between the Mets and the Yankees. And, you know, I can dig that. But what about Brian Cashman? And Brian Cashman, you know, doesn't sound quite as pumped. So hopefully, you know, that poker face that he has um, pays off. Now, say what you could say about the Mets. And I gave the benefit of the doubt to Steve Cohen on Wednesday with the whole Carlos Correa, you know, signing Correa. Uh, but in actuality, I don't give two fucks what the Mets and Steve Cohen are doing. And I know every baseball owner out there, um, they are already talking shit about Steve Cohen. And the fact of the matter is this is a guy that will be responsible for the next lockout. I'm telling you all that right now. You know, even Michael K has said it on his radio show. He believes that Steve Cohen is going to be the guy that starts uh, the lockout down the road. And when it comes to the Yankees, you know, I only care about what the Yankees are doing. And what is the next thing that the Yankees are going to do? Now, if you look at the Yankees' payroll, it's at $230 million. So, how much more money uh, is going to come out of Hal Steinbrenner's piggy bank? Because we're all intrigued. And all because of the comment that Hal Steinbrenner said, oh, we're not done yet in regards to winter moves. So, when... I heard that comment. I'm like, what's next? Do we need to get more bullpen help? Maybe, you know, I'm happy with what the bullpen is right now, as is. Or an upgrade in the outfield. Now, we did lose Michael Confronto to the San Francisco Giants. So they got him on a two-year deal. And... That's really what we're going to talk about with this whole Brian Reynolds situation. Because right now, it seems like all of the Yankee fans, they want Brian Reynolds. And the thing about it is, you know, the Yankees, they're not going to give away Anthony Volpe. They're not going to give away Oswald Peraza. They won't. And the fact that um, Brian Cashman at that same press conference on Wednesday said, uh, and I quote, the free agent market is not as full of opportunities as potential trade markets. Trade markets have been difficult, to be quite honest, in terms of finding matches that both organizations would be comfortable making. We are prepared to go with what we have initially. Is it a poker face attempt by Brian Cashman? 
And of course, you know, the free agent market, it's not sexy now. It isn't. After Correa going to the Mets, I really think that hot stove did cool down a little bit. But we know Brian Cashman. Brian Cashman has pulled off trades before. And he can make that happen. We've seen it. It's just to wait and see what's going to happen here. Now, when it comes to um, Brian Reynolds, a guy that is a switch hitter, he is an outfielder. Uh, to me, he's better than Aaron Hicks. No question about it. Uh, the guy's 28 years old. He's got three seasons of control remaining where he came off as came off of a season where he hit 27 home runs, scored 74 runs for a Pirates team that's fucking trash as fuck. And now what I was reading, and there's people saying this in the Yankee um, Reddit and Discord community. How about a guy named O'Neill Cruz? Of course, you know the Pirates are going to be like, you know what? We want to keep him. You look at O'Neill Cruz. Guy is 6'7". If you want to compare his throwing arm to any former major league player out there, it's Dave Winfield. He's only had 340 career at-bats in the major leagues. And O'Neill, this guy has all of the tools to be a superstar in this league. So, of course, you know, the Pirates. Why would they include a cheap player to the Yankees that is under contract for $700,000 and team control until 2029? You look at the look at the Pittsburgh Pirates organization in their history. Barry Barnes, Garrett Cole. Obviously, you know where Garrett Cole went to the Yankees later on. I mean, we tried to get Garrett Cole in a trade, but you know Pittsburgh wanted to work a deal with Houston. Batista, Jose Batista, Charlie Morton, Tyler Glasnow, Austin Meadows, Joe Musgrave. Sterling Marte. Those were guys that didn't stay with this organization. Now, the fact of the matter is simply is this. If Hal Steinbrenner is saying, oh, we're not done yet. And if you, and I can't believe it's been two weeks since Buster Only said this on ESPN. I, I don't know which affiliate of ESPN he did the segment where I forgot. But when you got Buster Olney saying that the Yankees are working on something big, could this be the big move right here? I know a lot of people want Tatis Jr. Listen, you guys are not going to get Fernando Tatis Jr. So, Yankee fans that watch my channel, and I'm being real as a fan here, you guys are not getting him. Shohei Otani? You ain't getting Otani. There's no way this organization is going to go and get a bat like Shohei Otani. I'm telling you all this right now. I mean, I want Brian Reynolds. I mean, that's a nice pickup for the Yankees if we could get him. But, you know, they're asking for so much. And... If you think about right now, Pittsburgh, and I said this, they want Anthony Volpe. They want Oswald Peraza. They want Jason Dominguez. Do you honestly think that Brian Cashman is going to let go of these guys? I mean, sure, you got other players out there in Austin Wells. You got Everson Pereira. Spencer Jones, I, I've been hearing mad shit that Spencer Jones is going to be ready. He's going to be big league ready uh, in the next couple of years. 
uh, Louis Cerna as well. So it's really the big question. I mean, if this team has the same lineup that they had last year, and I'm talking about Trevino, because Trevino obviously is going to be our starting catcher. Anthony Rizzo. I believe that Rizzo's bat will get better uh, this coming season because the shift is banned. DJ LeMahieu. We don't know what DJ LeMahieu, how he's going to be. I know that they were talking about him being uh, ready for the season, that um, he avoided toe surgery. Gleyber Torres. I know people want Gleyber Torres traded. And that's really going to be tough. I, I was listening to um, uh, BXB. I think it was BXB or John Boy. One of those two. They were talking about it's going to be tough to, to trade Glaber Torres. Josh Donaldson, please get rid of the motherfucker, man. I mean, this guy does not deserve to be in a fucking starting lineup. In 2023. Sure. The defense is good. But his offense production fucking sucks. Aaron Hicks. Don't even get me started with him. I mean. I'd rather see Oswaldo Cabrera. If they can't make a trade. For Brian Reynolds. I'd rather see Oswaldo Cabrera. Starting at left field. Over Aaron Hicks. Bader and Aaron Judge. But, man, just imagine if you can add Brian Reynolds and O'Neill Cruz, man. I mean, if you do add O'Neill Cruz, then obviously you know what's going to happen. You're going to have to get rid of either Peraza or Volpe. And that's what hurts with this organization because the prospect depth would be gone. And adding two players who are already major league players. This team has to go all in. And they, they've done that this season. But if you're competing with the Mets right now. Where Steve Cohen, by the way, has spent over $800 million. This offseason on players. I mean, this is George Steinbrenner 2.0 shit then you got to go in and you got to rival Steve Cohen. And that's how you're going to take the headlines away from the Mets after what they did and got Carlos Correa. And also another thing with these trades, it won't hurt the short-term payroll. So uh, that is it, guys. And uh, before I actually do head out, um, I like to wish, um, I don't know if this is going to be the last video, um, of 2022, uh, but I just want to say, guys, you know, I hope you guys have a great Christmas, um, Hanukkah, if you do celebrate that, I mean, this year alone has been so great for this channel, um, started it off a little bit late, uh, you know, in the beginning of January because of COVID-19, I got hit with that. Uh, by the way, to prevent that from happening again, I got the booster. So if you're doing a lot of your um, spending time with your family in the holiday season, please just get the booster shot. Um, it's going to make a difference. Uh, and then, you know, just the year of the rants. You know, I went on a whole bunch of rants this year with the Yankees. You know, starting this revolution you know, about the Yankees and, you know, just all the rants that I went on this year. I mean, these five-star rants, um, I know one of my rants this year, I caused some controversy where a, a former group of mine, you know, the, the TXN Sports World, um, I'm not affiliated with them anymore because I wanted to do my own work now and, you know, they didn't like uh, the way that I do my videos because to me, I'm always going to be that rated R guy. 
You know, it's just like the Attitude Era in the WWE, how they how they set the bar. You know, I'm setting the bar right now with all of the profanity laced tirades and you know the controversial words. You know, they say should not be part of community, but you know what? People say it in community anyways. I've I've seen people um, say it at bars and at sporting events. So um, yeah, um, if I don't do another video in 2022, I mean it was a great 2022 uh, to really get into all the stuff. I mean with baseball and 2023 is going to get better, folks. And all of the subscribers that joined as well. You know, we got a lot of new subscribers coming in. And um, I want to keep pushing that momentum in the new year as well. So until then, this is the Yankee Messiah here with you. I'm out. Peace.